Just a Viking here with my first ever pointy hat tutorial. Today's topic is going to be how to make smooth camera motion instead of those abrupt motions that we're used to in iClone. I have some primitives here to look at and I'm going to start by making a camera. Add camera. I always like to give it a name. I'll just call it main. And what I'm going to do is making sure I'm at time zero. I'm going to zoom in and look at each of these items in turn. I'm going to start with the cube, scrub over a ways, go over a look at this trapezoid, advance my timeline, go up and look at the sphere, a little bit close, there we go, move over to the cone, And as a grand finale, I'll advance the timeline and pull back and take in the whole beautiful scene there. And let's take a look at this. What we're going to see is it abruptly goes from horizontal to vertical, abruptly goes horizontal again, and then abruptly pulls back. And that's the uh, sort of hard on the eyes motion that was driving me crazy. What I had tried doing once before, and it was successful, but a lot of work, was on the animation tab, I would do a create path and try to make a path for my camera. But you see it lays on the ground. And that would just make it difficult. Uh, you'd have to edit path and, you know, point by point by point, get them up off of the ground, get them into the space you wanted. You know, this guy isn't even in a in the correct vertical plane. And it's just a huge amount of work. I'm going to click the path, hit my delete key and get rid of that. It was just way too much work. If I select the camera here, get out of main and go back into the preview camera, here I can see I've got my camera floating up in space back to timeline is zero. With the camera selected I'm going to hit F3 to bring up my timeline and open the transform button and here I can see all my keyframes and that's where those abrupt motions are taking place. Even if you right click and say your transition curve is ease in out you get a pause. Linear you get that abrupt motion. There's no way to smooth it out. I'm going to double click transform to get all the keyframes, right click and say convert position to path. I'll make it a nice bright red path so you can see it. And there without hardly any effort at all, I've made a path that corresponds exactly to those camera motions I'd made earlier. And as I scrub back and forth in the timeline, I can see my camera visiting each of these points. However, it's not on the path. My camera still is, is not associated to that path at all. And that's what I was missing. I tried this. I still had my jerky camera motion. It did no good and I abandoned it. So I appreciate the people who've uh, shared their secrets as well. With the camera selected, if I right click and go to path and say pick path, you're not actually picking the path, you're picking one of those control objects. At time zero, there's my first control object. And right click, pick, whoops, just a second here. Advance my timeline to the end. And here we can see I'm uh, corresponding to one of my keyframes up here. Right click the camera, path, pick path, and I'm picking the last control point. Now, uh, as I go on the timeline, it's going to go from that first point to the last point on the path. And you can see here I'm not taking the shortcut anymore. So what did this do? Let's go into our main camera view. Go to the beginning and press play. Get this timeline out of the way. And you see with very little effort, we've completely smoothed out that motion and gone from that jerky abruptness to something very beautiful and graceful uh, with our camera motions. Now we can also uh, take this to the next level. 
I'm going to get out of main, go back into preview. And I'm going to add an, a dummy object here. Add a little ball. Scale it down quite a ways. And I'll make it color red here so we can see it. And I'm going to move this ball over into different locations. Take a little look here. It's right in front of my cube. And at time, oops, I did it again. Right click, remove all animation. There we go because I always forget to put my scrubber at time zero. You got to see it for yourself. Okay, I've got time zero. And what I want to do is have the camera look at the ball. Um, so I can go along. I'll move my ball over here in front of the trapezoid. Move the ball up in front of the sphere. Move the ball over here um, by the cone. And just leave it there for a while. And on my camera now, if I select my camera, I can tell my camera to look at the ball. And so as my camera moves along the path, it's going to be looking at this ball all the time. And what I'm going to do here real quick is just uh, Sorry, we've, we've reintroduced some jerky motion. See, we've got that jerkiness back again. And you say, why? Uh, well, the reason is because the ball is moving abruptly, just like the camera used to. I'll go back into preview. And before I forget, I'm going to turn this ball into a dummy prop here. Set as dummy. So I can turn it on and off later with Control D. With the ball selected, F3 for timeline and transform. And we can see my control points. And right click on this and say convert to path. I'm going to do the same thing I did before at time zero. Um, one other thing here at the ball. I'm going to put the pivot in the center. It just makes more sense to me instead of at the bottom. I'm going to put this ball onto the path. So I'm going to start right here. And then at the end of my timeline, right click the ball, path, pick path, and I'm going to pick this final point. So now the ball moves on a smooth path. The camera moves on a small, smooth path. If we look at this in our main camera now, it should be smooth again. So with very little effort, we converted the first camera motion into a path and that was 80% of the fix right there just smoothing out the camera itself uh, now we've added a dummy prop put it on a path and um, we can get very sophisticated here now without uh, a whole lot of effort um, I don't like the way it looks way down real low here so I'm going to show you how we can fix that I'm going to click here with the mini viewport so I'm going to use the uh, preview camera in my big window and because I can work that way the main camera down below so now when I scrub my timeline I can see uh, I can see my paths and everything in the main window here and down below I can see what the camera sees so here's my problem area I don't like this 
I'm going to select my path, and I like picking paths and things uh, over here in the uh, scene manager. Uh, it just seems a little easier sometimes. And now with the path selected, I can right click, say edit path. Then I can click on one of these control objects. And all I have to do is lift him up. And look, we can see the results in the bottom right corner here. And I can move him around. And I can do the same thing now with the camera too. I can refine things. I can I hit escape there. I can go back to the other path. Edit path. Click a control point, and I can move these around too. That'll move the camera uh, higher and lower. So now I can see just uh, how I'm scrubbing this along, and I like that I'm not looking down so low at the ground. And, uh, you know, maybe I think I'm looking a bit too far to the right here. That's great. Let's just grab this point, pull him in a little bit. And uh, we can get completely different uh, camera actions. But what I like, again, is in my preview window, I can see where the camera is. I can see what it's looking at. And so I've got some spatial visualization here of what the camera's doing. And... Uh, Go back again to main and let's take a look at this once again everything is very smooth very nice I can just turn off the dummy control D and it's, it's beautiful and when you render it of course these splines for the path will not show up uh, let me know if you have questions I hope this helps have fun